Okay, in this video I'm just going to look at a force coded modulation uh, transmission and reception system. So first of all we need to be able to fill in a block diagram for one. And first of all we've got our input signal. Um, so that's going to be our, our analog input signal. Uh, we're going to put that into a low uh, pass filter. And you can look at another video um, at how to design a low pass filter. So that could be active or passive. Uh, what's the job of that of low pass filter? Well, it's to restrict, restrict the bandwidth of this input signal. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to restrict the bandwidth of the of that input signal. I could write that on in a, in a minute if you if you, if needs be, but we'll obviously see how time goes because some of these videos are working out to be um, quite long. Then we've got what we've got we've got which we've got the, what's called the sample gate, and all the sample gate does it um, takes a measurement of our analog signal, the the voltage of the analog signal at set points in time. So we need to say when we're going to do that. So we're going to have our sample sample clock, and that's all to do with the uh, to, to do with Nyquist. And we'll do a little calculation with uh, with that in a second or to a block diagram. So once we've got that analog voltage, so we've got the analog voltage and we're sampling at whatever rate that we're at, um, then we're going to pass that to an analog to digital conversion, analog to digital converter. So it's going to come in in so it's going to be in serial like that, effectively because it's a voltage, and it's going to come out in parallel. OK, and that's good, obviously, to, to remember, because then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put it into a parallel in serial out um, shift register. OK, and we then have to con we have to control how those those bits are shifted through. That's obviously we looked at uh, PSO um, on another video, so we need to look at how quickly we can shift those through so we're going to have a pso clock that does that that shifts each of the the the, the bits through so it takes the parallel the parallel word here and then and then shifts it through so we're shifting all of our information then out um, on our comms link or whatever might be and that's now in digital it's now in digital format okay So we've already said about our low pass filter there um, to restrict the bandwidth of the input signal. Uh, so then we need to look at this uh, sampling gate and uh, sample sample uh, clock. So if we say that we've got uh, we've got a signal, an analog signal. That's ranging from you know 300 hertz all the way up to um, 20 kilohertz. Then, then through Nyquist, then we're going to set, we're going to sample at um, twice the highest frequency. Okay, so our so we're going to sample then at. 2 times 20 kilohertz which equals 40 kilohertz okay um, so 1 over 40 kilohertz just to put that into perspective so it equals um, 25 microseconds so ev every um, every 25 microseconds going to take take a sample uh, and that's just a voltage and that's just a voltage measurement okay so what does that then mean well that means then that if for this then our sample clock is going to be at 40 kilohertz okay so I, so for, so that's going to define our sample our sample clock if we then take that, that then goes through to a, a, um, an ADC. So if we say that we're going to have a an eight bit ADC, and we can there's another video there for looking at the analog to digital conversion. 
um, then what um, so that that gets converted so that that that's that voltage measurement then gets converted into a, a digital into a word into a digital word okay so it's now in parallel that's now in parallel so those those eight bits there are coming out of the ADC okay into this um, parallel and serial out register but these these are coming in so our samples are coming in every 25 microseconds this is why I converted it into that so every 25 microseconds we're going to get another sample 25 micros microseconds another sample 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 so this um, parallel and serial register has got to work has got to shifted all of those if we're taking eight bits it's going to take shift all of those eight bits out before the next clock comes in before the next uh, sample takes place so we've got to then define what our pso clock is going to be which is nice and, which is nice and easy then so um so uh first output each a miss output the eight bits before the next sample okay so our pso clock then our pso clock then is going to be um 40 kilohertz times by 8 bits equals 320 kilohertz that's how fast our um, clock is going to be so um, so obviously this bit uh, now links into talking about uh, time division multiplexing so this is the this the PSO clock then is defining how quickly all of our bits are sent out on our comms link. So we're like, so taking that that eight bit word and going um, out onto a comms link. So what I'm saying now is, if we had a faster PSO clock, we could actually have more channels that feeding into um, into the system here, so that we could actually uh, get more bits out of the time. Uh, to give you an idea, if we if if the um, PSO clock was um, 2 megahertz, for example, then if we assume that each channel is going to be exactly the same, then we've got a 2 megahertz clock um, and we've got um, 320 kilohertz that that's how what the, our minimum that we need to be sending out which gives us then we can have six channels okay now there's multiple ways of, of, of working of working that out but obviously that's um, just one of them that to say that we can how many channels we can have okay right let's look at the receiving side this is obviously going to be quite short and sweet Okay, so if we look at the the receiver side of the house, then so we've got our signal coming in, our digital uh, pulse coded modulation coming coming in, and then we're going to put that through a um, a Schmidt trigger. And we talked to, talked to another video about Schmidt trigger, so that that's going to do our signal regeneration, get rid of our noise and interference. Um, then we're going to put that through into a serial in parallel out uh, and oh I forgot here to well I'll just obviously draw it um, draw it in so we need to clock that so we're going to clock those bits in at the same rate that they're, they're, they're coming out of the transmitter in so serial in so they come in one bit or another and then we'll then take them out into parallel so so they're now in parallel now and then we're going to put that through a digital to to analog converter and then through through to, so our digital to analog converter so uh, what are we going to use for that we'll probably use a summing amplifier and then we're going to put that through a low pass uh, filter again there and then we've got our analog 
signal out. Okay, what's our low pass filter job? Well, um, coming out of our digital to analog converter, it's still going to be quite a blocky, steppy output. So, therefore, our low pass filter is to remove all of those high frequency steps that we've got. So, effectively, it's smoothing the output. So, it is more of an analog signal than, than a stepped. And that is it for our. Uh, pulse coded modulation. I'm going to then look at do a uh, final video then um, if you're looking at them in this order on the differences between pulse coded modulation, pulse width modulation and um, and then the other one. Super duper.